Welcome to the Philippines' premier motor show. This is Autofocus. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. Here are our features on this edition of your electronic magazine, exclusive to the automobile and its industry. Starting off with reviews of two vehicle models presently in the local market. A compact SUV from MG, the RX570 TST Alpha, and a subcompact sedan from Mitsubishi, the Mirage G4 GLS CVT. Plus a feature to feature comparison of two multi-purpose vehicles, the GAC GN6 GE versus the Geely Okavanka Urban. On Autopedia, we'll talk about boost controllers. And together with the latest news and developments in the local auto industry, we shall have the launch of the all-new Ford F-150 as our special feature. The next 60 minutes is all about the automobile. This is out of focus, and we'll be right back after this short break. Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards, to push, to the extremes, to race, race, race. That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition, so you too can race yours. Strata athlete, confident to the core. Suzuki El Tiga. Life is beating fast. Find what you're waiting for. Seven seater in style. Welcome back to Autofocus, the automobile show. We start this edition of your electronic magazine with a review of one of the latest automobile models from MG. In this edition of Car Review, we check out another battler in the crowded compact SUV crossover market, the MG RX5 70ST Alpha. MG Philippines is slowly building a beachhead on local shores in the lineup of vehicles that claims British heritage. After all, the MG brand started out as Morris Garages back in England in the 1920s. Among the earlier MGs rolled out in the country is the MG RX5 70ST Alpha, a compact 5-seater SUV. In the RX5, MG went for the classic look with clean functional lines and just the right amount of chrome for the grille, side window frame, and lift gate handle. It's 4,545mm long. 1,855 millimeters wide and 1,719 millimeters tall, with a 2,700 millimeters long wheelbase. While eschewing the trend for flash and bang styling, the MG RX5 nonetheless does not lack for modern features. The RX5 Alpha features full LED headlamps and daytime running lights, chrome frame front fog lamps, side view mirrors with LED signal lights, LED tail light, and high mount stop lamp, Sharkman antenna. Quite functional in making the MG RX5 a proper SUV are the front and rear skid plates. Roof rails, lower body slide with ABS cladding and molding, all done in matte silver finish. The RX-5 also comes with a panoramic sunroof, now seemingly mandatory in top-of-the-line variants. One nod to flash, however, are the 18-inch two-tone alloy wheels that are wrapped by 235-50R18 tires.
The clean, uncluttered look is carried over into the roomy RX-5 interior with leather style upholstery that matches the side door panel done in stitched leather style. There are touches of chrome and gauge cluster in center stack trimming, as well as in the AC vents and the shift lever. The interior also comes with functional features, sliding front armrest, dual front cup holders with cover, rear passenger reading lamps, map pockets, and front seat back. Also quite functional is the trunk with 595 liter capacity that increases to 1,639 liters with the rear seats folded down. It also comes with luggage tray, trackable cargo cover, cargo area lamp, and 12 volt accessory outlet. The infotainment system features an 8-inch touchscreen display, Bluetooth connectivity, Apple CarPlay, multimedia play, a USB port, and 6 speakers. The MG RX5 Alpha comes with much of the convenience features now expected in top-end models. Smart keyless entry, push button and in start-stop, air conditioning with electronic temperature control and rear vents and center console and floor tunnel, electric parking brake, power windows, the driver seat power adjusts 6 ways, and with a tilt adjustable and telescopic steering wheel makes it easy to get the preferred driving position. A leather style wrap multiple function steering wheel comes with controls for the infotainment system as well as cruise control. The RX5 offers both a comfortable and spirited drive. Underneath the hood is a 1.5 liter inline 4 cylinder 16 valve gasoline engine with direct fuel injection, turbocharger, and intercooler. Generating 169 PS and 250 Nm of torque, the engine is made with a 7 speed twin clutch Sportronic transmission that sends power to the front wheels. The MG RX5 suspension features enhanced front McPherson struts and independent multi link system in the rear, absorbs road perfections well, and provides a stable ride in both city streets and provincial highways. The all-wheel disc brake system, ventilated in front and solid in the rear, provide predictable stopping power. MGS also equipped the RX-5 Alpha with a suite of driver assist and safety features that would satisfy the more discriminate of SUV buyers in the market. These include anti-lock brake system with electronic brake force distribution, quartering brake control, electronic stability control, hill descent control, auto hold function, and anti-roll protection. For safety, there are driver and passenger airbag, side airbags, 3-point ELR seat belts for 5, with pre-tensioner and load limiter for driver and front seat passenger, auto door lock function, child lock, isofix child seat mounting points. Adding to both safety and convenience are the reversing camera with rear sensors for easier parking and the tire pressure monitoring system. An alarm system with immobilizer has been added for security. In rolling out the MG RX5 70 ST Alpha, along with other models in its first foray onto local shores, MG Philippines described it as a smart, sophisticated, and stylish SUV. There is indeed some truth to the description. The latest auto industry news and developments, right after this break. Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards, to push, to the extremes, to race, race, race. That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition, so you too can race yours. To overtake the world, we all need a sense of greatness. Greatness that's powerful enough to change the world. Greatness that exudes intelligence. And a taste for style. That's greatness accelerated. The all new Honda Civic, now with Honda Sensing. Live Extra with an 
Mitsubishi Expander Cross. Welcome back to Autofocus. We now have the latest auto industry news. AC Motors and the five automotive brands under it collectively grew amid a challenging year in 2021. A member of the Ayala Group, AC Motors manages five automotive brands, Volkswagen, Kia, and Maxus as distributors, and Honda and Isuzu in Ayala-owned dealerships. The year 2021 saw AC Motors collectively expand its network from 85 dealerships in 2020 to 95 in 2021. Total vehicle sales from members of the group grew 30%, outpacing the industry's 18%. Toti Zara, AC Motors president for Automobile Group, attributed this to the group remaining focused on the interests of its customers and riding on the strength, versatility, and adaptability of the multi-brand portfolio. Zara added that each of AC Motors' five four-wheel brands introduced new models, keeping customer interest and brand awareness moving forward. AC Motor brands also poured in resources into integrating online processes and applications in its marketing, sales, and customer service operations, resulting in as high as 40% of monthly sales tracked back to its digital channels. For 2020, AC Motor plans to continue to steadily grow sales volumes with the introduction of new models, strengthening presence in the truck market, further expanding its network, and focusing on digital processes. The new Mercedes-Benz E-Class has arrived. In announcing the latest addition to the local Mercedes-Benz lineup, Frankie Ang, Chief Operating Officer at Auto Nation Group Inc., official distributor of Mercedes-Benz in the Philippines, said the new E-Class offers a refined sportiness, impressive design, and dynamism. It embodies a synthesis of emotion and intelligence. It is loaded with next-generation driver assistance systems, comfort features, and safety technologies that bring luxury experience to new levels and giving an even stronger impression. The new E-Class is powered by a 2-liter inline 4-cylinder gasoline engine, generating 197 horsepower and 320 Nm of torque made into a 9G Tronic 9-speed automatic transmission. Now available at all Mercedes-Benz dealerships nationwide is the E200 variant. Toyota has just upped the ante in the subcompact SUV segment with the all-new race. The race is a five-seater SUV that Toyota says has been designed and developed to be compact, active, and usable both as a daily and weekend drive. The arrival of the race signals that Toyota Motor Philippines is serious about carving a huge niche for itself in the entry-level SUV segment. Now available in all Toyota dealerships are four variants of the all-new race, a 1.0 Turbo CVT, 1.2 G CVT, 1.2 E CVT, and 1.2 EMT, with prices ranging from 746,000 to 1,036,000 pesos. Toyota says the race platform and powertrain have been developed from the ground up to realize outstanding levels of driving performance, safety, and peace of mind. The 1.0 Turbo CVT and 1.2 G CVT variants come with split-type LED headlamps and line guide, while the 1.2 E CVT and 1.2 E MT sport halogen headlamps. All variants feature daytime running lights. MG Philippines had a record year for vehicle sales in 2021. MG reports it sold 6,343 units in 2021, an 85% increase over the vehicle sales in 2020. The final quarter of 2021 saw over 2,000 units sold. The record growth in sales was driven by the MG5 subcompact sedan and the ZS crossover SUV. From January to December last year, 2,013 units of the MG5 and 4,158 units of the ZS crossover SUV were sold. Attorney Alberto Arcilia, president and CEO of the Covenant Car Company, says they approached 2021 confident that MG, with its strong British heritage and superior product portfolio, would resonate with an even wider Filipino audience considering the increasing mobility requirements brought about by the pandemic. Attorney Arcilia says MG will launch in the first semester of the year two all-new models that will delight the local market. Those are the latest news and developments in the automotive industry. We shall take another short break. Stay with us. I'll be right back. Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards, to push the extremes, to race, race, race. That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition, so you too can race yours. Live Extra. 
Astra with the Mitsubishi Expander Cross. Take the lead. Welcome back to Autofocus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. Here's our feature-to-feature -feature comparison of the latest automobile models belonging to the same category on Head to Head. In this edition of Head to Head, we compare specs and features of two Chinese brand MPVs, the GAC GN6 GE and the Geely Okavango Urban. In recent years, a steady influx of made-in-China sedans, crossovers, and SUVs have seen market segments getting quite competitive and crowded. And slowly but surely, China-made vehicles have gained some market acceptance. The MPV segment has seen a number of models bearing Chinese marks getting serious considerations from buyers. Among these are the GAC GN6 and the Geely Oka Vango. In this head-to-head, -head, we compare spec-to-spec -spec features of the GN6 GE and the Oka Vanco Urban. The GAC GN6 GE is 4,780mm long, 1,860mm wide, and 1,730mm tall with a 2,810mm long wheelbase. The GN6 G exterior features an expansive grille eagle eye headlamp with wing-like DRLs, integrated bumper and front fog lamps, and side view mirrors with turn signal indicators. It also comes with sunroof. The Geely Okavanka Urban is 4,835mm long, 1,900mm wide, and 1,785mm tall, with a 2,850mm long wheelbase. Its exterior features all LED headlamps with automatic control, daytime running lights and front and rear fog lamps, heated auto-folding side mirrors, rear spoiler with center high mount stop lamp. It also comes with chrome outside door handles, roof rails, and two-tone aluminum alloy wheels strapped by 22555R18 tires. The GN6 GE sets 7 including driver and leather upholstered seats, 2 in the second row captain's chair that slide and recline and comes with fold-down armrests, and 3 in the third row bench seat with matching headrests. It comes with keyless entry and push button start, the tailgate opens to a 324-liter trunk space which increases to 1,100 liters with a third row seat folded flat. The dashboard features a 7-inch instrument and 8-inch infotainment displays housed in a single panel. The center console features cockpit controls. The adjustable steering wheel also has switches for the audio and cruise control. Other comfort and convenience features include automatic climate control with vents for passengers in the rear, power steering, power windows and door locks, power outlets, USB ports, electronic parking brake, multiple cup and beverage holders. Infotainment comes from an 8-inch touchscreen with Bluetooth connectivity, Apple CarPlay, and a 6-speaker system. The Okavango Urban sits 7 in seats with PVC leather upholstery. Both the driver and front passenger seats are powered, 6 ways for driver and 4 ways for passenger. The second row has 3 individual seats that fold separately. The third row seat for 2 splits and folds 50-50. With the second and third row seats folded, there is a 2,050 liters of space for cargo. The Okavanka Urban comes with push button as well as remote start. The center console features shifter and electronic parking brake control and a cubby hole. The dash features 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster and 10.3 inch touchscreen multimedia system with a QD link for smart connectivity with mobile phones. There are 42 storage nooks and compartments. Other comfort and convenience features include a triple zone air conditioning system with ceiling vents for the third row and CN95 filters. The GAC GN6 is powered by a 1.5-liter turbocharged inline 4 gasoline engine that generates 170 horsepower and 265 Nm of torque. The engine drives the front wheels by a 6-speed automatic transmission. The GN6 rides on a suspension using LTEP of Pearson struts in front and a twist beam system in the rear. The brake system uses front ventilated and rear solid disc. The Geely Okavanko is powered by a mild hybrid powertrain featuring a 1.5-liter turbocharged 3-cylinder gasoline engine and 48-volt electric motor synergy system that together generate a maximum of 190 horsepower and 300 Nm of torque. 
The engine drives with front wheels via 7-speed wet dual clutch transmission system and comes with three drive modes, Eco, Comfort, and Sport. The suspension system uses front McPherson struts and portion beams in the rear. The Okavango uses an all-wheel disc brake system, ventilated in front and solid in the rear. The GAC GN6 GE comes with a host of driver assist and safety technologies that include anti-lock brake system with electronic brake force distribution, electronic stability program, traction control, hill ascent and descent controls. Parking is made easy with rear sensors and camera. Added for safety and security are three-point seat belts, dual front and side airbags, isofix child seat anchors, engine immobilizer and anti-theft alarm. The Geely Okavank Urban is equipped with anti-lock brake system with electronic brake force distribution, hill descent control, electronic stability control, immobilizer, tire pressure monitor. Integrated into the infotainment system are 360-degree view cameras that, with rear sensors, aid with parking. It also comes standard with 3-point ELR seat belts for all occupants, dual airbags, siding curtain airbags, and isofix anchors. The GAC GN6 GE and the Geely Okavango Urban are helping advance the cost of China-made vehicles in the country. with the Mitsubishi Expander Cross. Be it fine dining, a romantic garden wedding, a relaxed casual meal, or an important business event, Illustrado is the place to go. Aside from its famed paella, the Illustrado restaurant, which is located within the history-laden walled city of Intramuros, is also the favorite destination of food gourmands for its famous calios and lengua and other classic gustatory offerings. Illustrado Restaurant, only for the foodies. GAC Motor Motul is the most trusted motor oil of the top teams competing in some of the world's most grueling race competitions. The WRC, the WTCC, and the Japan GT. Motul is the only 100% fully synthetic motor oil in the market. It has antioxidation properties that prevent premature thickening and aging due to thermal stress and guarantees total engine protection. For more information about Motul engine oils, visit www.motul.com.ph Welcome back to Autofocus, the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine. Our special feature is next. The Ford F-150 has always been seen as an aspirational vehicle on local shores. But always, many have been asking when a diesel variant will be made available. Well, Ford Philippines may have gotten tired of listening to the clamor and has rolled out Ford's full-size pickup truck with a powerful turbo diesel engine. We have actually unveiled and launched officially in the market the all-new F-150, the best-selling truck in, in the U.S. for the past 44 years. So the F-150 Lariat 4x4 diesel is finally here in the Philippine market. The 
biggest highlight here is that the F-150 is now with a diesel engine. 3 liter V6 power stroke turbo diesel engine. It also comes with a sport appearance package. So it's got the dark gray grill, 20 inch dark alloy wheels. And also other features that are very notable is that you got the Ford Copilot 360 2.0. So it's now more advanced. Another unique feature also, nifty feature, my favorite, is the stowable gear shifter. So we're excited to bring it here. As early on, we're already receiving a lot of inquiries and demand for the vehicle. It's also a niche product. We're not really expecting volumes, but we are expecting that it will help the brand also as a, as a halo, no? uh, showing what Ford can do in their trucks in, in our lineup. This will be for the people who are buying into a lifestyle. We did introduce the F-150 again after a long absence in the market in 2020. And that is actually building on the success of the Ranger Raptor. to invite everyone to all of uh, Ford's 50 dealerships nationwide uh, to check out the all-new F-150 Lariat diesel and of course all the rest of the Ford uh, lineup. You can also visit us at uh, www.ford.com.ph for more information about Ford vehicles. Now that a diesel-powered Ford F-150 with all the bells and whistles of modern pickup trucks is available. Ford should be hoping many of those who had boasted that by a diesel variant would put their money where their mouths are. Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards. To push, to the extremes, to race, race, race. That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition. So you too can race yours. Suzuki El Tiga. Seven-seater in style. The Mitsubishi Strata athlete, confident to the core. Welcome back. We have more cars for you to know and appreciate as we have our second car review this week. Subcompact sedans remain to be among the most affordable cars available to those who feel safer using personal instead of public transport in these COVID-19 times. Not only are they affordable, some are quite sporty and stylish, like the new Mitsubishi Mirage G4. The Mitsubishi Mirage in hatchback and sedan form has done well for Mitsubishi Motors Philippines since it made its local debut in 2013. The company says it has sold more than 92,000 Mirage units in the country, a really impressive number considering that it has sold around 370,000 units worldwide. 
Even more significant is that the Mirage sold locally are being assembled at the Mitsubishi Motors plant in Santa Rosa, Laguna. Mitsubishi expects to continue to produce the Mirage locally to meet an even stronger demand for the Mirage following the recent launch of the new Mirage G4, the subcompact sedan that already has a solid following among Filipino car buyers. This expectation is bolstered by the new look of the Mirage G4 sedan that at 4,305mm long, 1,670mm wide, and 1,550mm tall is great for driving in crowded and narrow city streets. The Mirage G4 GLS CVT should stand out in a crowd with a fashion that already integrates Mitsubishi's dynamic shield concept with a new headlight, front grille, and bumper design. Along with color-keyed front and rear bumpers, the new-look Mirage G4 exudes a sporty attitude that is enhanced by the 15-inch alloy wheels wrapped by 185-55R15 tires. The G4 comes in multi-reflector halogen headlamps, bulb-type rear combination lamp, side-view mirrors with integrated turn signals, and LED high-mount stop light. The Mirage G4 cabin is roomier than expected for a subcompact four-door, five-passenger sedan. The Mirage G4 GLS comes with keyless entry and key operation system that allows one to get into the cabin and start the engine with the key fob in pocket. The Mirage G4 sits five comfortably. The driver's seat adjusts six ways and combined with the tiltable steering wheel, wrapped in leather in the GLS variant allows for a good, comfortable driving position. The rear seat back comes with a pull-down rear center armrest that features two beverage holders. The high-contrast instrument cluster features a speedometer and rev counter, as well as a multi-information display monitor for such info such as drive range, fuel consumption meter, service reminder, chip meter, and outside temperature. Other interior convenience features in the Mirage G4 GLS include electric power steering, auto climate control, and steering wheel mounted audio controls. The Mirage G4 infotainment comes from a 7-inch smartphone link display audio system with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, Bluetooth, radio tuner, USB port, and placed through four speakers in the GLS variant. The new Mirage G4 is powered by a 1.2-liter or 1,193cc 3-cylinder MIVEC engine that generates 78 PS and 100 Nm of torque. The engine drives the front wheels via an Invex 3 continuously variable transmission. Power and torque are more than adequate to make driving the Mirage G4 a GLS which has a gross weight of 1,335 kg both practical and fun as well as safe on city streets or provincial roads and highways. Mitsubishi describes the Invex 3 CVT as a wide ratio transmission system that works to maintain optimal revolutions per minute for high performance and fuel economy. For the driver, this means smooth acceleration and deceleration in all driving conditions. The G4 also has a cool feature that helps the driver learn economical driving habits. Mitsubishi calls this the Eco Mode Indicator. It works with an Eco Indicator on the instrument cluster which lights up whenever the accelerator pedal is pressed and is operated in an eco-friendly manner. The Mirage G4 suspension system uses a McPherson strut and coil spring with stabilizer in front and torsion beam in the rear. The brake system features 14-inch ventilated discs in front and 8-inch leading and trailing drums in the rear. For safety, the Mirage G4 is equipped with dual airbags, 3-point ELR seat belts for 5, isofix child restraint as well as tether anchors. The Mirage G4 GLS also comes with anti-lock braking system with electronic brake force distribution, brake override system, and a rear-view camera with guidelines to make it easier and safer for parking in tight spaces. The new Mirage G4 comes in titanium gray metallic, cool silver metallic, red metallic for the GLX CVT and GLS variants. One can get a Mirage G4's GLX CVT or GLS CVT in white solid but only with an advanced confirmed order. The Mirage G4 is one of Mitsubishi Motors Philippines' top-selling nameplates and should remain so with the latest iteration proudly rolled out by its factory in Santa Rosa, Laguna. Know more about your car and how to take care of it here on Autopedia. Hi, this is Sydney and today we're going to talk about 
turbos, and boost controllers. Chances are when you buy a diesel car nowadays, it has a turbocharger. It's not exclusive anymore to high performance cars like Subarus or Evos or racing cars. Almost every turbo diesel on sale now from any manufacturer has one of these things. And that's why they're great and they do make a lot of power and a lot of torque. Now this turbocharger sucks in air here, pumps it, air goes out here. And this air has pressure in it. The same way that in your mom's pressure cooker, when you reach a certain pressure, the whistle sounds. In the turbocharger, there's a similar mechanism that tells you that, or actually tells the engine that, okay, pressure is right, let's set it at that and don't go any higher. It's this thing, this is called a wastegate. Inside here is a diaphragm that goes forward and backward. What it does is connects to this lever, which opens and closes this flap. Once the pressure goes here, it's correct, it will push this lever out and this flap will open, bleeding off some of the exhaust gases. Now, there's a way to increase the boost, which is using a boost controller. And it's this little thing. Basically what this is, this is a valve. Air goes here, air goes out there. This little knob restricts how much pressure that goes in here. So if you blow here, you twist it, only little air comes out here or a lot of air comes out here, delaying the signal to open and close the wastegate. And this thing simply just installs in between pressure side here and the wastegate. So the simplest is this goes here, this goes here. That goes there. That's the simplest way to go about it. Or the other way that they recommend is to a little bit more complicated but can do a little bit more precise is this way. In a nutshell, this is how it's connected. So how this works is this. There's pressure inside this line that goes to the wastegate. What we're doing here is we're bleeding some of the pressure off here. So let's say this one comes out of 14 PSI. But since you're letting out some of the pressure here, pressure that goes here is less, maybe 12. So here you're bleeding one, two, three, maybe four PSI. By adjusting this knob here, there's a plus and a minus here. The plus and minus here don't mean anything. It does not mean one click is one PSI, two click is two PSI, no. Every car is different, every turbocharger behaves differently, so the only way for you to properly adjust this is if you have a working and accurate boost gauge as installed in your car, or you have it brought to a dyno, so you can see if the adjustments that you're making are making power indeed, and if it's enough, because this one here will now connect to the boost sensor of the dyno itself. Now when you open your engine, most people can identify some of the basic parts like this is the air filter, this is where you put in the oil, that's the battery, but that's pretty much it. And for turbo diesel cars, like on this Montero where we're going to install the boost controller, this is your turbo down here. That's the turbocharger right there, this is the compressor side, that's the turbine side or the exhaust. The wastegate is actually down here, this rod here, that's where the wastegate is. That's what controls how much boost pressure is enough and then it opens the flap. So all the air the car gets comes from here, the air box. Then once it goes in, it gets burned, exhaust gas goes out here. And this is where we're going to install the boost controller. <laughs> so this is the boost controller installed. It's just this little thing, then later on once we're finished setting it, we're going to secure it here somewhere with a zip tie, and then here, this is a lock nut. We will tighten this so no makulit car wash boys gonna make me hit this when they do a car wash because if they do, it'll mess up your boost settings. So here, there's a plus and a minus. We start here by making the knob all the way to the minus. So this is basically a stock boost. Then we'll slowly rotate it to the plus side while watching on the dyno how much boost we actually get. Now as you can see, we have the boost controller on one side, then we have this thing connected to the dyno. This is where the ECU reads boost. This is in the manifold, and it goes to this sensor. This thing's called a manifold absolute pressure sensor. This converts pressure into voltage that the ECU can understand. And this is what also it references, let's say, okay, at two volts, it's this much pressure. At three volts, it's this much pressure. Therefore, we give 
this much fuel and that much fuel. And that's how it works. That's our featured Autopedia this week. Taking care of your ride has been made easier. And that's Autofocus this week. We hope you have found this edition of your electronic automobile magazine informative as well as entertaining. Check us out on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. On behalf of my dad, Butch Gamboa, this has been your host, Ray Louis Gamboa. Please stay safe and healthy.